Yeah, so Clare 124, Waterford 219. All of which means that Tipperary advanced to the final, which is uh, which whatever what everyone wants to see, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's funny, Shane. Oh, I call, I'm going to call your bluff here, and I'm going to make sure everybody knows. Until we researched for this show, you didn't even know Tipperary were I qualified for the Munster League final after the weekend. Lies, lies, and more lies. See, you're trying to drive a wedge among Tipperary people, but look, we're not having it. We're not having it. We've been looking for No, do you know what? That aside, I think it's great for Tipperary to be, just to have another competitive outing insofar as it's competitive. But, um, you know, and it required, because Tipperary had lost to Waterford, it required, after Tipperary beat Clare, Clare had to win, but not by too much for Tipperary to get through it. So it's just kind of by dint of that. Um, so it's, I think it's great for Liam Cal that he'll have another outing. But Clare scored 117 in the second half. Mm. Having only scored seven points in the first half, that is some turnaround. And you know what? Maybe it's something to do with the conditions. Like both Galway and Dublin really struggled against the wind and up that slight hill in Parnell Park. Dublin didn't score from play in the second half. And I think Galway might have scored two points from play in the first half. So that'll tell you. Whereas it was plenty of scoring going the other way. But... um. That's good for Clare because they have a lot of new up and coming players coming, and I think they're one of the most exciting set of sets of young forwards uh, in the game. They definitely do. We have I don't we haven't seen Shane Meehan yet. I don't think after a kind of a, a long club run, but Mark Rogers, you're just hoping he, he'll get a clean run. The thing about um some of the Clare lads is, and this might sound a bit mad, but they are they nearly too fast? Do you know what I mean? As in they're more susceptible to maybe picking up hamstring injuries or whatever, which I think both had last year. But they're hugely exciting if they can stay fit. Throw, throw, throw Peter Duggan, Shane Meehan, Mark Rogers, Tony Kelly, Shane O'Donnell, potentially like Cottle Malone, a couple of other, like David Fitzgerald. That is hugely exciting. And Adrian McGrath is going to come in now and say, and you still think they're going to be 15 Munster. <laughs> uh, yeah. that, that view might change after the league or coming before Munster because you have to view what you've seen before that. But... Definitely a very, very exciting forward line. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the the Watford team that played as well. So Sean O'Brien, Cartic Daly, Irla Daly, Conor Ryan, uh, Jack Fagan, PJ Fanning, Shane McNulty, Paddy Levy, apparently very good again, Dara Lyons, Aaron Ryan for four, from Four Mile Water. Then you also had Michael Kiley playing. He seemed to be the furthest man to goal. And he, what I'm just double check what he scored. Scored one three and at times he seemed to be up there on his own. Let us know what you think of that. But he's look, looking like he's primed for a very, very good season. You also had Patrick Kern, Kevin Mahoney, uh, number 20, Stephen Bennett, he started, and Podrick Fitzgerald as well. I think that's someone we haven't mentioned in terms of like young players that could really take over this year or do really well. Uh, Patrick Fitzgerald and pa- Podrick Fitzgerald, both of Waterford. Pick your three to get out of Munster, lads. Uh, we've, we've kind of done that already, haven't we? Yeah, I think we have, yeah. Mine is, uh, mine is Limerick. Uh, Lim- was it Limerick? Cork Waterford, um, Waterford not having home advantage is not ideal to say the least, but you kind of have to judge it on like not being smart, it's all grand saying that now. But you know, if there's a big injury along the way or whatever, your viewpoint changes, or you know, teams form is stink throughout the league, and you're just thinking, will they be able to turn kind of things around or whatever? But uh, that's my tree at the moment, anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm very torn on this one, obviously, Limerick, obviously, Tipperary, and then uh, one of the other three, I sp- at the moment, I'm starting to think Waterford, but I'm not even fully convinced on that because, like, their league performances last year and their championship performances a couple of years before, you're like, they can't have gone that back that much. And then maybe they'll get a bounce this year as well. And they would hope that one or two lads will kick on this year, that injuries won't be as big a problem. So, yeah, I'm starting to think Waterford at the moment. But I, I, think, I still think Cork yeah. have the players to win in All Ireland, but uh, I'm not convinced they will because. There was still some of the facets of play that frustrated me from last year. Stick passing in tight areas in the middle where all the traffic were. I mean, you just have to hand pass through those areas if you're going to work it through there rather than trying to stick pass. It's just not possible to do yeah, it. Yeah, I thought they forced the pass a little bit too much at different stages as well. And a couple of the Limerick scores were just from Cork mistakes. I thought it was interesting as well. There's definitely... Uh, there's definitely uh, Limerick are very smart in what they do. Like I think for you know, three quarters of the Cork puckouts, they just let them have them. To just let them have the, the sharp puck out. Like I, I actually think it's fascinating when you know you're going to be meeting a team again and again and again. You can kind of you can box kind of clever enough. So if Cork are allowed to have every puck out, you go and play them in the league, and they might let them do that in the league as well. Then you play them in championship, and they push right up, and Cork have to win ball, and they're 
dealt with a completely different task. Do you know what I mean? You can kind mm. of do that now. And it's like, like conceding puck outs. Like, imagine we're talking about conceding puck outs five years ago. Not, like, not, it, we wouldn't have dreamed of it. But it's something you can almost, like, lull a team into thinking maybe you're going to do one thing or not allow, not allowing them to work on their long puck outs. So I know Stephen a couple times yesterday, Patrick Collins actually did go along, even when the short one was on. If I was the manager, I'd be actually saying, listen, they're kind of sucking us in here. We need we need to go along. We need to see whether we're able to win a puck out or whatever. Now, that